Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and today with a two or three examples on what? On the discrete time four year series. So let's say starting off with a very simple is a sine wave. I give the heading of examples. Fine. Now this you know very well that I have written these this is the synthesis equation this is the analysis equation and this is the property the four coefficients are periodic x of n is sine of omega naught n we are asked about the discrete time four year series so of course we can use this equation x of n for that first we need to know a k this is a lengthy process for such a simple wave we can do it with the help of what the help of the Euler's theorem that it is but first but first first in the discrete time domain this signal sine omega naught n may or may not be periodic fine so we can have two conditions of periodicity the first is that 2 pi upon omega naught is an integer value the first condition of uh, number one condition of periodicity is what that 2 pi upon omega naught this is equal to some integer value and this integer value is the fundamental period n of the wave so let's say this is fulfilling this condition let's say this is fulfilling this condition so i can write my x of n as sine of uh, uh, 2 pi by omega naught into small n okay now what do you have is we want to represent in the form of that so we can use Euler's theorem right we can use Euler's theorem for this exponential of j theta minus exponential of negative j theta divided by 2 2 j so I could write as 1 upon 2 j exponential of j theta is what 2 pi by omega naught and n and, and also 2 pi by omega naught n small n is included over here yes it is and then similarly you have a minus 1 upon 2 j exponential of minus j 2 pi by omega naught into n so this is from Euler's theorem Euler's theorem so have a look over here if you relate it over there so this a k a k j k uh, and the period is what 2 pi by n and n so this k is equal to 1 fine so which means that this is giving us a 1 and this is giving us a of minus 1 and this we know very well a 1 is 1 upon 2 j a minus 1 is negative 1 upon 2 j this we know very very well fine now uh, this was uh, you know um, and of course the rest are zero so a k is equal to zero for k not equal to plus or minus one now you can draw the graph of course you can draw the graph and the graph would be like this so let's say this is the k axis this is zero uh, this is the the a k axis so what do you have basically they are located at plus one which is which is 1 upon 2j positive value and and located at minus 1 which is a negative value so now have a look they would repeat they would repeat by this property k plus n so we assume that n is equal to some value they would basically repeat over here at n but let's say i assume so that we have uh, a proper knowledge assume that n is equal to 5 so this would repeat at 1 plus 5 so this would come at 6 fine similarly this negative 1 plus 5 so this would come at 4 and similarly then this is basically a 6 but this is equal to a 1 this is basically a 4 this is equal to a of minus 1 then again it would repeat 6 plus 5 this would repeat at 11 a 11 but basically this is a 1 and similarly this goes in on 4 would come back at 9 this is basically a 9 but is equal to a negative 1 
fine similarly it would be at the left hand side as well if this was located one that would be located back at negative negative five negative four negative four yes so so this would be at a negative four this is basically a negative four but this is basically a one a negative one would be at a negative six a negative six is equal to a negative one similarly negative four so then you have a negative nine ne uh, no 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 yes negative four uh, minus five so you have a negative nine right this would be at negative nine or whatever it is if I'm writing it wrong the thing is that this would repeat in this particular fashion over here it would repeat in this particular fashion over there that's it that's it fine now let's assume the second possibility the second possibility this was the first possibility that this signal is periodic the second possibility is that 2 pi upon omega naught is equal to the ratio of integers is equal to some ratio of integers and let's say that is equal to n by m where this capital n again denotes the fundamental period m is some value let's say they do not have any common factors so they are as it is in the p by q form now let's say again they are satisfying this condition so my omega naught would come out to be my omega naught would come out to be what 2 pi uh, by n into capital m 2 pi by n into capital m isn't it like this it is so which means that my x of n my x of n would come out to be sine of You have an m, you have a 2 pi upon capital N and you have a small n. Now again you could use the Euler's relation and again you could write what? That my x of n, now this is the Fourier series representation 1 upon 2 j exponential of what? Uh, j m, j m 2 pi by n small n minus 1 upon 2 j exponential of minus j m 2 pi by small uh, by capital N into small n. Now have a look again. Have a look again. What do we have? We have the same. We have the same. What? This Fourier coefficient, two Fourier coefficient, one and this one. So have a look over there. It was a one. Now over here we have an m. So this represents basically an a m. This represents an a of negative m. So I would write them over here. A m is equal to one upon two j. A negative m is negative 1 upon 2j is that fine so so now if we we draw the graph of this one so what would we have we would have it like this if uh, and if I draw it over there so let's say I draw it over here if this is my k axis this is my a k axis so the first is located at m at plus m minus m so we assume those two values over here again that let's say the period is the same 5 n is equal to 5 m is equal to let's say 3 such that the ratio is equal to 5 upon 3 like this so m is equal to 3 means what that this is now m a m so this is of a plus 3 so plus 3 is 1 upon 2 j a 3 is 1 upon 2 j and a negative 3 is negative 1 upon 2j now this was for the values of m now what n has to do they would repeat after 5 3 plus 5 is 8 3 plus 5 is 8 so a8 basically would be equal to a3 similarly a negative 3 plus 5 is positive 2 so at 2 you would have it like this a of 2 is equal to a of negative 3 similarly similarly at the left hand side as well 3 minus 5 would be a negative 2 so a negative 2 is like this a of negative 2 would be a of 3 similarly a of negative uh, 3 over there would be a of negative 8 a of negative 8 a of negative 3 is that fine it is so this continues in this fashion to the left side this continues in this fashion to the right hand side this was the first question the second question what do you say should I give it as a homework 
let's say I write it first question is that x of n is equal to 1 plus 1 plus what so let me check it's a sine of 2 pi by n into small n sine of 2 pi by n into small n plus 3 cos of 2 pi by n into small n plus cos of 4 pi by n into small n cos of 4 pi by n into small n we have a phase shift plus pi by 2 now this is the question so now what do you have we can split each and every one of it we can split each and every one using the Euler's theorem you can do it yourself let me you know just copy paste it from the book so that we don't have any confusion so x of n would be what x of n would be like this one would come directly then you have a plus sign so plus, we have 1 over 2j minus 1 over 2j let's say we take 1 over 2j common fine so we'll have an exponential of plus this thing minus exponential of minus this thing so we directly write exponential of j 2 pi by n into small n 2 pi by n into small n minus exponential of minus j 2 pi by n into small n right this is for this thing then you have plus 3 times cos of so 3 times cos of and cos is 1 over 2 exponential of d theta plus exponential of minus d theta so 1 over 2 I take common I have an exponential of j 2 pi by n into small n and then I have a plus exponential of j minus j 2 pi by n into small n fine then you have again cos so cos uh, is 1 over 2 is taken common let's say then you have an exponential of j uh, 4 pi by n plus pi by 2 times n and then you have a plus exponential of minus j 4 pi by n small uh, uh, minus plus a pi by 2 into small n and this is it now what do they say collecting the terms the common terms we find out what so j 2 pi by n is over here also j pi 2 pi by n is over here similarly negative j 2 pi by n similarly negative j 2 pi by n right so you can collect them together you take them common i would write it directly again here from the book you can go a little stepwise i may skip a step or two so what do we have 1 plus 1 is the same then you have a 3 by 2 plus 1 over 2j so 1 over 2j 3 by 2 3 by 2 plus 1 over 2j is multiplied with an exponential of this particular thing j 2 pi upon n into n right and then you have uh, this 1 over 2j 3 by 2 minus 1 over 2j right so you would have a plus 3 by 2 minus 1 over 2j into an exponential of negative j 2 pi by capital N into small n isn't it like this it is and then we do what we split that form we split that so we can write it like this that 1 upon 2 exponential of j pi by 2 I can write it if I split it j pi by 2 into an exponential of j2 2, 2 pi by n into small n right and then similarly you have a plus 1 over 2 exponential of negative j pi by 2 into an exponential of negative j2 2, 2 pi upon n into small n I have split this multiplied added and then split it all together so now you can see from here you can see from here that I have an a naught which is 1 this is a naught which is 1 then you have this is for k equal to 1 so you have an a1 is equal to uh, 3 by 2 plus 1 upon 2 j right yes and then you have what you have a mm, this is for a negative 1 so a negative 1 is 3 by 2 minus 1 over 2 j fine and then that one is for 2 so have a look over here we have 2 so this is for a 2 is uh, 1 upon 2 j fine and similarly a negative 2 is this one is negative 1 upon 2 j 
So we have got the coefficients, the, we have got the coefficient, you plot them, you can either plot, you know, you can either plot uh, number first is the real of x plus the imaginary of x. So you can have two plots. The first is for real, the second is for imaginary. Or in the second you could have the, 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 the magnitude of ak and the second would be the, the, the phase of ak. So you can draw any of the graphs you draw it yourself you draw these Fourier coefficients they would repeat after n repeat after n as we have seen over here I am not drawing them I am not drawing them okay so you draw them yourselves and I will get into the third example directly for which I remove the board first Okay, the next that we consider is the periodic square wave. We have seen this in a great detail in the continuous time case as well. This is the, the, the n axis. If this is 0, one two three one two three. this is let's say negative n, this is let's say positive and the magnitude is and one and one okay and one similarly then it repeats at n so if this is n you have one sample one two three at one side one two three on the other side in the middle of them it is zero this is going in this way similarly over here you have a negative n this is the period one one two three at this side one two three at this side this repeats in this particular fashion on the left side we are asked to find the Fourier series representation of this so what do we do we use the the equations if we are asked to find the Fourier coefficient so what do we do we have a k is equal to 1 upon n interval over one period so what interval should i select 0 to n should i select this should i select any other interval let's say i select the interval that is from a negative n by 2 to the positive n by 2 so that would include my this portion in symmetrical in this sort of symmetrical i told you the book says to prefer n, n by 2 to positive n by 2 so i have what i have my ak would be equal to 1 upon n the summation would be from a negative n by 2 to positive n by 2 you have an x of n you have exponential of negative jk 2 pi by n into small n fine now have a look, the function is only existing in the interval negative n1 to n1 which is lying in this interval. So what could I write? I could write that this is equal to 1 upon n. The summation is from negative n1 to positive n1. The value of x of n is 1 multiplied exponential negative jk 2 pi by capital N into small n. Is that fine? Now, uh, we, I want to do what? I want to make the lower limit zero. I don't want it. Basically, the book, Alan V. Oppenheims wants that. So, I'm going according to the book. So, this lower limit, I want to make it zero. So, for that, I consider another term. That's, let's say that is M. And M is equal to small n plus capital N1. Fine. So, over here, when N is equal to negative N1, n is equal to negative n1 so this would imply m is 0 m is 0 right so this is what we've got so i can write that my ak is equal to 1 upon n then the summation would be what the summation would be from m equal to 0 and then when this is equal to n1 so n1 plus n1 so this m would be 2 times of n1 so i can go from 0 to 2 times of n1 and inside i have exponential of negative jk 2 pi upon capital N into small n. Isn't it like this? It is. Now what can I do it? I can, uh, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Now small n, so small n I forgot. So this is the small n, so small n would be equal to m plus n1, m minus n1, m minus n1, m minus n. Now what we do? We, we, we can split this exponential with this m, m and with this uh, negative of n1. 
So what do I have? Is a k is equal to one upon n? One upon n is the same, right? Yes. You have an exponential of j k. Exponential of j. Uh, if I take n one outside the summation, right? If I take n one outside the summation, why n one outside the summation? Yes, yes, n one outside the summation because the, the the sum is with respect to m. Okay, so I can say that uh, one upon n exponential of this would be positive j k j k two pi by uh, n two pi by n into capital n one. Fine, and then you have the summation is like this, which is aiming from m running from zero to twice of n one. You have an, an exponential of negative j k. 2 pi by n into small m and isn't it like this so let me check it is now for this sort of an equation i have a result we have a result it's a mathematical result okay this is not from my side that m running from 0 to n x to the power m m running from 0 to n x to the power m this would be equal to 1 plus x to the power 1 minus x to the power n plus 1 upon 1 minus x 1 minus x so this is the result so over here if you see m running from 0 to n and this is my 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 x let's say so it's raised to the power m fine so now what I would have, I would write my a k is equal to what? 1 upon n. Let me take my copy with me as well. Exponential of j k 2 pi upon, uh, so this would remain the same exponential of j k 2 pi by small n, by capital N into n1. This would remain the same. And this summation would go as what? You have it like this, 1 minus x is what x is this particular thing exponential of negative j k 2 pi by capital n and this is uh, raised to the power n plus 1 so over here you would have uh, the the upper power is m which means the the upper limit n plus 1 right so you would write what you would write in n plus 1 upper limit plus 1 so the upper limit in our case is 2n so i would multiply it with a 2n plus 1 fine and similarly in the denominator you would have a 1 minus exponential of uh, 1 minus x so 1 minus exponential of negative jk 2 pi by n and that's it that's it so now what do you do is now what do you do is that uh, we have uh, a mathematical step over here and what is that step what is that step so the step is to do a multiplication or whatever it is to convert to get here an exp one into an exponential function one into exponential function so that these two exponential of something minus exponential of something you would get a sine function basically the objective of us our objective is to to get this into a sine function so what do i do is i just copy this uh, step from the book i write it over here that a k is equal to one upon n now i don't know these mathematical operations you know it very well exponential of j k negative j k 2 pi by 2 n 2 pi by 2 n fine and then this is multiplied with an exponential of j k 2 pi j k 2 pi n1 plus 1 over 2 n1 plus 1 over 2 and whole divided by whole divided by n and similarly minus n exponential of minus jk 2 pi n1 plus 1 over 2 divided by n fine so have a look isn't this resembling a sine function it is Similarly, in the denominator, you have an, exp an exponential of negative jk 2 pi upon 2n multiplied with what? An exponential of jk 2 pi upon 2n minus exponential of minus jk 2 pi upon 2n. And 
you simplified yourself you simplified yourself you get what a k is equal to 1 upon n i will write it again as well the final expression a k is equal to 1 upon n sine of 2 pi by n into k 2 pi by n into k n plus n 1 plus 1 over 2 this is what you have in the numerator similarly this is all in the argument of sine similarly over here you have a sine of pi k by n pi k by n and that is it but have a look again over here we have a problem this is for k e for k not equal to zero because if you put k equal to zero you would have a sine zero by sine zero zero by zero form indeterminate form undefined form so what do you have for a naught a naught is now the dc or the average value you know that very well so how do you calculate a naught a naught is the dc or the average value a naught in our case over here would be here we have a negative in one here we will have a positive in one we will have a two and one and we add one plus one divided by the period and now i explain how this is in the cutting instant the average value is what you take the the value of the signal divided by the period right so over here dividing by the period is the same but value of the signal is not the same over here we take the number of samples the number of samples of the signal in one period divided by one period number of samples in one period divided by divided by one period right so have a look for the number of sample why did i not take 2n why did i take plus one because this was negative one negative one so i could have taken this so have a look over here if this is negative one let's say let's say this is a negative three right let's say this is a negative three so one negative two negative one zero right and then you have it one two three one two and three so if i directly take a two and one so two and one would mean and one is three so two and one would mean six right so if that means six so this means that i have six samples so have a look one two three four five six so one sample remains so i i take a plus one to to get the number of sample accurate so the a naught or the dc value in this particular case is what the number of samples in one period divided by the period of the wave and that is it that is it the next uh, topic is uh, we have properties of discrete time Fourier series i am not going to touch it even why because i have uh, seen the continuous time Fourier series uh, properties in very detail examples in very detail this you can do it yourselves i have done the book examples for you guys the graph of this would be a sinusoidal graph the graph of this would be a sinusoidal graph a k if you're drawing a k so this would be some sort of a sinusoidal graph okay okay you some sort of you know you draw it properly for yourself in the book it's already drawn for a coefficient a k fine now uh, let me tell you one thing that you may have a short break over here and the reason is that uh, i would be having my exams uh, so I would not be free for about you know a month You will not get that much of a break. You will get a maximum break of a one week, you know I will try to keep the uploading uh, slow so that the break comes very minimum Fine, so after my exams are over. I will get into the new topic of Fourier transform Till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers Goodbye